G'day guys, Tom and Wade here with you from DDHQ with uh, one of the most exciting releases on our wine calendar every year. Um, Wade, I'm just going to come out and say it. Ravensworth, I reckon, is my favourite Australian producer. Sorry to everyone else, but I don't care. This is, <laughs> this is, where, I'm, this is where I'm drinking forever. Between Rieslings, Textural Whites, Skinsy stuff, Light Reds, Big Reds, uh, and Brian's cheeky but very, very crazy intellect. Uh, we just absolutely love these wines and we can't get enough of them. So this is the estate release. It's the 20th anniversary uh, of Ravensworth and, and Brian and Jocelyn's first wines from Canberra all those years ago. Uh, the first release in two years of these wines, the 2021s, uh, and we're just obviously very excited. So Wade, tell us a little bit about 2021, mate, and I'll pour us a glass of Riesling. So it's hot. It is. Uh, first in a trio of like three cooler vintages coming up from Ravensworth, but yeah, he didn't make any of these wines. These are all estate grown in 2020 because the bushfires were quite close to his, to his property in Canberra. Um, no fires on the property, but just too much smoke damage to, to make any wine in that year. So it's been two years um, and they look absolutely smoky. So. So uh, Riesling's long been a, a staple for, for Brian. Uh, I should mention as well, uh, obviously the family, um, the full family affair these days. Oh yeah, Lewis. With, with Brian's son Lewis there, um, getting on the tools the last couple of years and, and Brian able to spend more time um, working with his pizza oven. Um, <laughs> but Riesling's been a long time favorite. Um, Brian makes a, a regional kind of blend that's just a pretty straight up and down Riesling. This is state Riesling, it's always where he likes to have a bit of fun. So, the, I mean, the acidity on this thing is ridiculous. Crazy. And, and he works around that, uh, some incredible texture from, what's it, nearly a year on lees in, uh, in, in concrete. Yeah, um, egg, right? a massive egg. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, with this, I really get like this kind of hint of like a Fino Sherry sort of lift to it. Like it's got a real saltiness sort of sea spray kind of character. Texture's unreal. Um, Acid is crazy. It's just a, it's a killer, killer Riesling. Unbelievable. That's really like a three-dimensional Riesling. Like it's got mm. that purity, limey character. It's got the minerality and acid and then this lovely texture. But it's all very integrated. So a year, nearly a year um, on lees in egg and then another year in large food drawer as well just to integrate, settle down. And I believe that's the first time he's given it a full two years maturation. Well, I think this is the first time we've had the full set of five wines off his block all released at the same time, um, all sort of two years from vintage. So this has been a plan for years to try and get a couple of years worth of breathing space between the vintage of the wine and release so that they just look a bit better once they hit the market. And um, and you can really see the benefit in all these wines. They're so relaxed on like on opening. That's the, I mean, I reckon that's just about the best Australian Riesling I've tried, guys. Yeah, young, young Riesling, seriously, that's un unbelievable. Pretty crazy, isn't it? Yeah, far out. That's so good. All right, granary. So for those that don't know granary, yeah, for those that do, uh, it's it's Brian's uh, long-standing textural white, I guess. Until recently, he's not made a Chardonnay. This is his kind of rich textural white. Um, it's a Rhone Valley-inspired blend of, of Viognier, Marsan, and Roussan, uh, all off Brian's estate fruit, um, as always. Um, and um, always manages to, to get that texture and unctionness that you, unctionness, unctionlessness? Unctuousness, Unctuousness yes. that you'd expect from those varieties, but still with spice and freshness and, and layers. Yeah, I think if you if you get too overblown with Viognier, yeah, they're just gross. Um, whereas this has got so much like spicy, pickled, gingery sort of character to it. Plenty of acid there as well, and that beautiful lazy kind of texture. So it's got like this really cuddly sort of mid palate. Um, most Viognier yeah, is gross, but that one is not. <laughs> All Viognier yeah, gross except for this, Brian. You've done it. No, that wonderful wine. Um, it, it's a bit of a sleeper in this range, the granary. Mm. I reckon the other wines get the attention. This is always sensational uh, and, and always one of the most popular. Yeah. Yeah, and you can see that Rhone inspiration in the in the Shiraz Viognier that we'll get to, but like that sort of Rhone wine, kill it. All right, moving on. So, seven months. This year is seven months plus seven months. It's 14 months. It's 77 months. Check that out. So this is Brian's um, very popular uh, long-term, I think it's the 10th time he's made this um, skin contact white wine. So it's Pinot Gris, Riesling, Gewurztraminer. Again, all the state fruit. Um, if you go visit Brian in his cellar, 
there's little barrels bubbling away doing all sorts of interesting things and eggs and foodras and all every vessel you could imagine um and and this is a real uh craftsman's wine this he really puts this together very deliberately so it's seven months on skins uh, and then this year then a, a further seven months after that uh back in foodra again or i think it's back to the egg back to the back to the egg yeah um and i like if you think like negroni you're in the right spot yeah it's like orange peely alpine herby almost like a lifted sort of vermouthy kind of character to it um bit of a mind-bending wine but it's all about texture like it's all about having sort of beautiful fine powdery tannin instead of like really harsh phenolics in this wine uh and that extra time to just allow them to soften so well it's a different beast this year guys too hot tip this, this is I've always loved this wine. This has been a favourite wine that I always buy every year. This is a little bit more wild, I reckon. Mm. Like a little bit more raw. Um, not in like a, uh, any kind of like faulty way. It's just got a bit more of a, a wild, that kind of Negroni character edge to it, which is really cool, really interesting. But, but hot tip, this is something else this year. Mm. So good. Yeah. So cool. Don't drink that too cold. Or drink it cold. <coughs> Just drink it. All right. We're heading reds. Right. But light reds. So again, we're thinking 2021, guys. This is a distinctly cool year. So after the the, uh, the, the, the really hot year that was 2020, 21 was cool. And what you're seeing with that is really fine, elegant wines, particularly in these reds. They're, they're really pretty, feminine sort of styles. I was absolutely blown away by this Sangiovese when we, when we tried it the other day. It has a real pinosity to it. It's a bit of a wanky term, but it does have this like light body, delicate kind of feel, but with Sangiovese, Sangiovese character. Man, if you don't like that, you're a dickhead. That is so good. It's like <laughs> Australian Sangiovese is very rarely delicate and nuanced and pretty like this. Sort of rosy, super perfumed. It spends a million years on skins, which is why you lose a bit of colour, because that sort of drops out after a while. But what you lose in colour, Brian says, you make up in texture and mouthfeel and complexity. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, what is it? It's like 300 days on skins or something ridiculous? Yeah. Um, so crazy way to make wine, but um, the end result is outstanding. That's, it might be my pick of the wines in that and the Riesling maybe this year. I don't know, but it's so good. Love that. Love that. Yeah, Pinot lovers, check that out. Uh, Grenache, you know, if you love that modern style of, of McLaren Vale Grenache on, on the, the uh, Blue Witch Spring sort of sandy soils, those really aromatic, light, bright fruited sort of styles, think this, but with obviously different varietal characters from, from San Giovese. Um, that's a really thoughtful, interesting, unique Australian wine. I, I just love it. Mm. Wow. All right, yeah. On to the big boy. All right, so this is probably the wine that was, you know, kind of put Ravensworth on the map, I guess, Shiraz Viognier. So 20 years ago when he started the label, Brian was working at Clonakilla, uh, making wine there with Tim Kirk. Obviously, Australia's premier Shiraz Viognier, uh, but now this has sort of definitely developed its own identity as one of the benchmark wines in that style in the country. Um, this, uh, the 21 is, is a lot cooler vintage than the last couple of released, the, like the 19. Um, so it's much more in that pretty Northern Rhone style, really yeah. delicate, really vibrant. The, in the red fruit sort of spectrum. Yeah. Like some years, in warmer years, um, this can go a bit darker, a bit meatier, a bit gamey. This looks really, yeah, all floral, beautiful, you know, violets, cherries. Um, in that kind of red fruit area, which is what you tend to see in those cooler vintages. Um, not without complexity or power though, it's all still there, just in a slightly lighter frame, um, which I just love and I think it'll age beautifully as well. That slightly meaty, sort of gamey character as well to it. That is a ripper glass of Shiraz. Um, yeah, far out. That looks better today than it did the other day, I reckon. Yeah, that looks great. At least that's what we should tell. <laughs> Guys, um, five remarkable wines here from uh, a, a remarkable producer in Ravensworth. Um, uh, look, I said he's my favourite producer. We love all of our producers. Seriously, this is, this is where it's at. 
from Riesling, Textual Whites, Skinzy, Light Red, Full Red. Um, it's got everything this release. Now, uh, this estate release is sort of like a, we get kind of one, one swing a year, so we were pretty close with Brian. We get, we get a good crack at the wines, but they're not around for long. Um, so if you'd like to try them, please don't hesitate, get on quick, um, check out the site. Um, you've got a little tasting pack there of the five wines as well. Um, but look, these are great to drink now. They're fantastic for the cellar, they age beautifully. They're great with food. Brian's an amazing chef and he, he crafts the wines to be enjoyed with food. Well, he said he is. Has he made you anything? <sighs> Not yet. No. That's my fault. Yeah. Have to go down there and stand. Um, so yeah, Brian, well done. Love Ravensworth, guys. Get the wines where you can. Thanks, Wayne. Cheers. Cheers, guys.